Brennan? It's just like OK Files. It's just like OK Files. People die every day. Give them proper burial. On our grave. I was faking. I used ninja focus to slow my heart rate down. What are you doing? I'm burying you. I'm alive, I'm alive. You're waking the neighbors, no. shut up! Yeah. This is your fault. I'm exhausted. I want to sleep good tonight. Don't you touch my drum! Tommy! Ah! What's up, everybody? This is Average Planeswalker, and uh, today I'm going to do something different, but we have spoilers that we got to get through, and uh, I've been falling behind because I've been editing other videos, and I'm like, I'm on the learning aspect of editing and all that, so uh, it's been taking a lot longer than I thought, so we're going to just head on to Mythic Spoiler, and we're just going to scroll through them and talk about them. Uh, this won't be like my other videos where I have each individual card up on the screen and then I have other cards to compare what I'm talking about. During editing, I might add the cards that I'm talking about. If I reference any other cards, I might do that. But I want to get this out quick because I am so behind. Um, and hopefully next spoiler season, I'll have a better grasp on how to handle it and, and be better on it and keep more on tabs with it. And uh, by then, I'll be better at editing. So with the ramble out of the way, uh, we're going to try and blow through this quick because there's a lot that I've missed. Um, there's going to be some limited cards that I just kind of gloss over a bit and uh, won't go into too much detail about them as they're going to be mostly for limited. But uh, I'll try to give my, uh, my thoughts on them and everything as well. So... Yeah, let's get started. So we have Combat Thresher. It's a 7-drop artifact creature construct. It's a 3-3, three, three, uh, which has prototypes. So for 2 and a white, you can cast it as a 1-1. One, one. has double strike, and when it enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card. So this is a limited card. Uh, I think will be really good, unless you have a way that you can somehow flicker this, with maybe with Drafna. Um, but otherwise, you're just drawing one card for 3, which I don't think is that great, because you're only getting a 1-1 one, one body. Um, and the double strike doesn't really mean much else after that if it's just a 1-1 one, one, unless you're attaching things to it or making it stronger. So, uh, What do we got up here? All right, so hopefully my camera isn't at the way. There we go. All right, Teresian Mindbreaker. It's a 7-drop artifact creature juggernaut. It's a 6-4. When it attacks, if any player mills half their library rounded up. Oh, this is just like... Um... <clears throat> There was a creature that did this too. I don't remember. I'll, I'll try and find it and probably put it up here in editing. <laughs> Not up here, but up here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of cool. I guess good for mill, but I mean, it still costs seven to bring out. All of these artifacts are seven. A lot of them are. Or above. Seven, eight, and nine. I don't think I remember seeing one that was like six. Um, but this does have unearthed for three blue and a colorless to bring it back and then exile it. And it is a rare. Uh, next up, we got this figure. Oh, this is a... Uh, a welcomed reprint. Uh, this figure's been in the format for a long time. Well, actually not in this meta, but it's a reprint that's been out for quite some time. I think possibly since OG Innistrad. Because <clears throat> I remember the artwork had like um, a handprint on a dude's face. Like I think that was the first print of it. But um, instant speed to our creature gets a minus two, minus two to end of turn. Which is going to hit a lot of things for one black. So that's really, really good. I like this a lot. Uh, heavyweight Demolishers, 7 drop artifact construct creatures to 8 6 with menace. At the beginning of your upkeep, tap Heavyweight Demolisher unless you pay 3. And it has unearthed for 6 and 2 red. Um, a lot of these unearthed costs and uh, untap costs are going to be very effective with uh, Power Stone shards. Or Power Stones. I don't know why I keep saying shards, but. Uh, what do we got next? Arbalist. Ar Arbalist? Yeah, Arbalist Engineers. 1 red and a green. It's 2 2 human artificer. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. Engineers deals one damage to any target. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. It gains trample and haste until end of turn. Or create a power stone. Um, this is really good. The one damage, uh, it's it's really nice that you have it for any target. Uh, that way you can possibly just take out the Planeswalker. Um, I mean, unless your opponent's at one, and then you play this and kill your opponent too. Um, but you're probably going to only... Or, or if there's a one-one... 
or x1 that needs to die, then you do that. But you're mostly going to probably put a counter on something or create the power stone. Um, so that's not too bad. Uh, let me see. You got to constantly look. All right. Prima. Lin oh, that's in a different language. <laughs> All right. Let's open it up here. Uh, Yoshin Frontliner. Artifact creature soldier costs one. Whenever Yoshin Frontliner attacks, another target creature you control gets a plus one plus one until end of turn. Has unearthed for one white. Uh, that'll be good and limited. Whenever it attacks, another target creature you control gets a plus one plus one until end of turn. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Signal Pest. Do they have it right here on the side? Usually they have cards that remind you of it. Oh, they don't. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of a Signal Pest. Um, yeah, Signal, Signal Pest had Battle Cry, so it's a different mechanic, but that was just the first thing I thought of. Uh, Tyrant of Kerr Ridges. Four and two red, which is a creature dragon. It's a four five that has flying. When it enters the battlefield, it deals four damage to any target. That's really good. Uh, and it has dragon breathing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, cards like this kind of eventually see play, I think, probably mid-season, late season, for the fact that 4 damage ends up being really good, especially if it's to any target. Um, <clears throat> if this just said to Creature or Planeswalker, it wouldn't be that great. Um, and who knows, it may not be that great right now because it's a 6-drop. But we've had dragons in the past that are 5-drops, and they've had some ETB triggers that were really good. So for one more mana... In this format, you get to um, do four damage to anything. So that's, I think that's something to keep an eye out on. <clears throat> Next, we have a land, Demolition Field, which doesn't come in tapped. Taps for colorless. You could tap two and then tap it to sack Demolition Field, destroy target non basic land and opponent controls. That land's controller may search a library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield, then shuffle. You may search your library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield, then shuffle. Now, I'm going to have to reread. Field of Ruin, because um, that's what this just reminds me of, and it just seems like. Excuse me. Destroy target, because I think just the wording at this point. Sack Demolition Field, destroy target non-basic land, and opponent controls. Down the control, search for the library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. You may search your library. Let's open this up real quick. Destroy target non-basic land and opponent controls. Each player. Hmm. Okay. So this one is like for EDH purposes. Um, and then this is for you and your opponent only. So that's the difference. I knew there was something different about it. <clears throat> and next we got Painful Quandary, which is a reprint. Uh, three and two black enchantment whenever an opponent casts a spell. That player loses five life unless, five life unless they discard a card. Um... This will most likely see play for the fact that uh, Esper Midrange was one of the top decks in Worlds. Um, and there's a lot of instant speed interaction right now in Standard. So uh, Painful Quandary will most likely see play. It's not going to be a 4 of by any means. It'll probably just be maybe a 1 and 1 in the side. Or just 1 in the main that's it. Um <clears throat> but it's a good welcomed reprint to EDH players because if I remember right, Painful Conjury costs quite a bit um, to uh, to purchase. Okay, I thought it was going to show the original art, just so I wasn't tripping. <laughs> All right, we got Blanchwood Armor. It's a two and a green uncommon enchantment. This is a reprint. Uh, creature gives a plus one plus one for each forest you control. Next we have. Sardian? Sardian? Sardian Cliff Stomper. It's a 1 and a red. It's a 0 4 creature Minotaur Barbarian. As long as it's your turn and you control 4 or more mountains, Cliff Stomper gets a plus X plus O, where X is the number of mountains you control. <clears throat> well, obviously, this will go into your um, mono red aggro. Uh, it doesn't have trample, so that's good. But it'll, it'll be pretty big. Uh, it'll at least be a 4 4 on turn 4. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, corrupt. Five and a black sorcery. Corrupt deals damage to any target equal to the number of swamps you control. You gain life equal to the damage dealt this way. That sucks. <laughs> it just rem reminds me of a uh, Gary uh, from OG Theros. Tendrils. Consume spirit. Yeah. Oh, no. Gary was with um, mana pips. Mana symbols and everything. Uh, devotion. That's what it was. 
Um, geez. That's going to be really good. Flow of Knowledge, four and a blue. Draw a card for each island you control, then discard two cards. Oh, so there's one for each color. Okay. Uh, for each island you control, then discard two cards. And it's at instant speed. That's really good. I like that a lot. We'll be playing this for sure. Because with all the triomes out right now, we have island in at least two to three of the lands. Plus, if you're playing islands in any way, you're obviously going to be playing that. Mono blue is going to be probably playing like one of these maybe, maybe two. Um, maybe not actually. I don't know, we'll have to see. Probably not. It's too expensive for Mono Blue. They want to hurry up and get everything out quick. Uh, lay down arms, which is one white sorcery. Exile target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of planes you control. It's controller gains three life. Oh, wow. For one. Exile target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of planes you control. For one, that's really, really good. And it exiles the creature. Oh, that's so good. I love that. Calamity's Wake. One and a white instant. Exile all graveyards. <clears throat> Excuse me. Players can't cast non-creature spells this turn. Exile Calamity's Wake. Uh, this is a really, really good card. Um, a buddy of mine were talking about it, uh, I think, a day or two ago. And, yeah, I don't know if this is... I haven't gone to Twitter to look at magic stuff, like, in a day. But I don't know if people are overlooking this or not. But this is... This is going to see standard play. This card is really, really good. Instant speed to get rid of your graveyard alone is really good. Um, but at the at their upkeep, before they even draw, you cast this. And so you know they're not going to play... Here it is. <laughs> Invoke Despair. You know they're not going to play Wedding Announcement. You know they're not going to play Wandering Emperor or Kaido. Um, or things like that. Because they can only cast uh, creature spells for the turn. Uh, they're not going to play Bank Buster that turn, you know. Um, and then you obviously exile this card, but it's it's a way to get rid of the graveyard with so much graveyard hate happening right now. Plus, it's kind of like a semi-silence. Um, as you can see, I'm sure it'll come up right here. Yeah. So your opponents can't cast spells this turn. It's the closest we're going to get to silence in the, in the format, but that's kind of what you're looking at. So that's really good. I like that a lot. Uh, Disenchant's back. Nice. Destroy entire artifact or enchantment. Uh, Lorne Disciple of History. <clears throat> three and a white human artificer. Three, three. Legendary creature. Whenever Lorne Dis Disciple of History or another legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, return target artifact card from Engraver to your hand. Okay. Hmm. So if they get if if something gets destroyed or if you're milling yourself or you discard to an effect, <clears throat> you have a way to get it back. It's not bad. Uh, we got repair and recharge. Three and two white. Return target artifact, enchantment, or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Create a power stone. There it is. I was wondering if we were going to get some sort of effect that can bring an artifact, <coughs> excuse me, an artifact back from the graveyard to the battlefield because. All of these artifacts that are 7, 8, and 9 drops are hugely expensive. Hugely expensive. Sure, they have prototype on all of them, but the, the cost to just bring out the best of it is so much mana. So for 5, you could bring out any one of those, and you create a Power Stone shard, or Power Stone token. That's really good. I like that. That's going to see some play for sure. <clears throat> it's White Reanimator. That's cool. We haven't had something like that since um, Innistrad and... Well, refurbish from Kaladesh, true. <clears throat> but I was thinking of the other one. It's uh, I think it's three and a black, and then has flashback for four and a white. Um, you can bring creature card back. That's what I was thinking of. But refurbish is probably better. Uh, Survivor of Corliss, one white. First strike, one one creature. Tap one and a white. Exile Corliss from the graveyard to scry two. Oh, that's pretty good. From your graveyard. That's pretty cool. If you ever want the scry at the end of turn or something, you can just exile this. That's not bad. I, I, I can see this being played in standard. It's a 1-1 one, one first strike. So you stop X1s from attacking you because it has first strike. And then if it dies, that's fine. You can still exile it from the graveyard and scry two later in the game. That's really good. If you're hitting like a land pocket um, and you're getting flooded, you can scry the two and then go ahead and 
you know, do what you need to do. So that's really good. Phalagi Archaeologist, one and a blue, zero three human scout creature. Phalagi Archaeologist enters the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a non creature card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. If you don't, put a plus one plus counter on Archaeologist. You may put a non creature non land from among those cards milled this way into your hand. Okay. Might be getting limited. I don't know about, um, well, because it says you may. So you don't have to. So you can use this to mill yourself and get your big artifacts into the graveyard and then repair and recharge maybe the next turn or something. So <clears throat> we'll have to see. Uh, we've got a sorcery coming up too and a blue, Forging the Anchor. Uh, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal any number of artifact cards from among them and put the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. Or excuse me, in random order. Uh, that's pretty cool for three. It's really good. It's almost like you're drawing... Uh, one to five cards for three if you're just playing an all artifact deck that's really good um i love the artwork it's sahili and i think that's the uh well obviously it's the anchor that um there's the coffin that teferi talks about and that's what he's going to go into go on his pilgrimage all right what do we got next latnam adept uh three and a blue it's a three three human wizard creature whenever you draw your second card each turn put a plus one plus one counter on latnam adept okay Kind of reminds me of a uh, letter shredder a bit, but that's that's fine. Uh, Might stones animation three and a blue enchant artifact. <clears throat> when it enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card. Enchanted artifact is a creature with base power toughness four four in addition to its other types. Cause it, so this reminds me of that scissors card that came out a while ago. Ah, there it is. Yep, insult artifact. Uh, gets a five five in addition to its other types, and that it, it took a while for this to um to see play but then it started taking over the format pretty quick so but it only costs two this costs four so i think they kind of fixed it uh next we got urza's rebuff one and two blue instant choose one counter target spell or tap up to two target creatures it's not bad it's it's counter spell that's what it is but uh you're getting an option to tap two creatures as well because counter spell is one and two blue so it's just a better counter spell uh which they don't have pictured here <clears throat> or not counter spell excuse me cancel I meant cancel. Cancel is one and two blue, which is just counter spell, counter target spell. Um, <clears throat> but on, like I said, this is just a better cancel. Uh, Astronaut's intervention for one black instant. Until end of turn, target creature gets a plus two and plus O, oh, excuse me, plus two plus O oh, and gains when this creature dies or is put into exile from the battlefield to return to its owner's hand. There's a lot of effects like this. It's pretty cool. It's good that it has the exile aspect to it as well. So, um, Usually it says when it dies, it comes back to the battlefield or something. But this is whenever it dies or exiles. Uh, Disciples of Gix, four and two black. When Disciples of Gix enters the battlefield, search your library for up to three artifact cards, put them into your graveyard, then shuffle. So that's really good with repair and recharge to kind of get yourself set up. <clears throat> uh, let's see, move, yep, right there. Uh, Gix's Caress, two and a black, kind of a play on word for Liliana's Caress. Uh, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Create a tap power stone. So you get to thought seize. You don't take damage. You're paying two extra, but you get a power stone because uh, you get to choose a non-land card from it. Um, so this reminds me of Pilfer for the format that we have right now in the meta. Um, and I like Pilfer. It's really good. Uh, but this actually might be... I don't know. It just depends if how early you want to. I mean, we have duress, we have pilfer, and now we have Gix's caress. Like, there's a lot of hand hating uh, in the, in the meta right now. But it's just gonna matter if you want the power stone or want, or not. That's pretty much what it's gonna come down to if you're gonna play Gix's caress or pilfer. <sighs> Excuse me. All right, no one left behind. Four and a black. Sorcery. This, costs, this spell costs three less to cast if it targets a creature card with mana value three or less. <clears throat> Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. <clears throat> it's not bad. So for one and a black, you can get something that's three or less. Hmm. Uh, Power Stone Fracture, one and a black. <clears throat> Sorcery has a district cost to cast a spell, sack an artifact or a creature, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Um... We've, we've had other effects like this before, so it's nothing really new, but it's really good. Thran Vigil, one and a black. Enchantment, whenever one or more artifact and or creature cards leave your graveyard, during your turn, put a plus one counter on a uh, target creature you control. <clears throat> so this will be really good when you're uh, 
using Tenacious D to keep recurring it and bringing it back from the graveyard. And um, when it leaves, so I don't think you can put the um, I don't think you can put the counter on <clears throat> on the creature. It's on the Tenacious D when it enters because this triggers as it leaves the battlefield. So once you cast it, this trigger happens. So uh, yeah, but still you get to put it on another creature. So that's really good. Uh, Falaji Chain Dancer, three and a red, human soldier. It's a two four. And has the ability to tap two colorless. Flies your chain dancer against double strike to end of Wow, that's really good. <clears throat> that's really good just for two uh, two colorless. Because you can always keep attacking with that thing and threaten the first strike. Or threaten the double strike. Uh, for damage to the face or kill their creature with double strike because it has first strike. Uh, so we got next is Mistress Domination. One in a red enchantment aura. Uh, enchant, enchant creature. As long as you control enchanted enchantment. As long as you control enchanted creature, it gets a plus two plus two. Otherwise, it can't block. Simple. Uh, what do we got next? Uh, Pyric Blast. Uh, three and a red instant. As additional cost casts a spell, sac creature. Pyric Blast deals damage equal to sacrifice the sacrificed creature's power to any target. Draw a card. <clears throat> uh, blast deals damage to the sac. Okay, I don't know why I'm reading difficult here. Deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target. Okay, so whatever creature you sack is what um, the damage it deals to any target. Oh, oh, I think that's like uh, kind of like not fling. I guess yeah, I guess fling. Ah, fury. That's what I was thinking. This is the one I was thinking of. But yeah, I'll also fling. Uh, Kazul's fury is what I was thinking of. <clears throat> um. We got raised to the ground, two and a red sorcery. This spell can't be countered. Ah, that sucks. Uh, destroy target artifact. If its mana value is one or less, draw a card. <clears throat> huh. What can we do with that? Oh, so we can't counter it, but uh, we can use Obscura Interceptor. <clears throat> I'll put a picture over here, hopefully. We can use Obscura Interceptor to put it back in their hand and kind of slow them down. Uh, and what that will do is we get a 3-1 creature, or if you connive properly, you get a 4-2 creature that has lifelink. So we get a body, we remand and put this back into their hand, and we protect whatever artifact we have for at least one more turn. Um, and then on the next turn, now they have to think, okay, do I really want to get rid of that artifact right now, or do I want to get rid of this creature first? So it might give us another turn with our artifact if the artifact is that important. So um, this will be able to just one-shot any of those big artifacts the seven eight and nine drop artifacts so keep that in mind if you want to just keep those around for like one or two turns obscure interceptor can just put this right back in their hand but then again you have to be playing esper colors for that so <clears throat> which isn't difficult all right next we got sibling rivalry three and a red sorcery gain control of target artifact or creature until end of turn untap it it gains haste until end of turn create a tap power stone token Pretty simple. Mistress Research Desk, which is one drop artifact, and you can tap one. This also has Unearth for one and a red. You can tap one and tap it to sack the Research Desk. Exile the top two cards of your library. Choose one of them. Until end of your next turn, you may play that card. I like that. <clears throat> I like it. It's exactly a red ability. That's why the Unearth is one and a red. But I love that this is an artifact, so you can at least do If Even if you don't unearth it, you at least get this for one, one shot to... Uh, to have that effect in any color. And I think that's really good. Um, exile top two cards of the library. Choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You may play the card. Yeah, so it's essentially kind of like drawing a two cards at the end of, the, of your opponent's turn. Because that's when you would crack this. And uh, you can play those until the end of that turn. That's pretty cool. I like that. It's an artifact. <clears throat> next we have epic confrontation with for one and a green sorcery. Target creature you control gets a plus one plus two until end of turn it fights target creature you don't control so it's just a basic fight mechanic in the buff uh Falaji excavation three and two green sorcery create three tap power stone tokens and you gain three life it's pretty simple uh fog of war two and a green you gain one life for each creature on the battlefield prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn by creatures with power three or less um, it's kind of obviously reminiscent of Fog, Fog of War, but the gain life aspect is really good. <clears throat> I think that's, I think that's pretty cool. 
Uh, Gaia's Gift, one and a green instant. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. It gains reach, trample, hexproof, and indestructible to end of turn. Jeez. What? You put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. It gains reach, trample, hexproof, and indestructible. Wow. So is that just... I don't know. Is that just better than uh, Tamiyo's Guidance? I mean, it costs one more colorless, but you're gaining reach, so you can block a flyer if you have a grounder. Um, and it's going to be indestructible. And you're protecting it, giving hexproof. And it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Because I think Tamiyo's Guidance just gives a plus one, plus one. Oh, they didn't put it on here. <clears throat> wow, that's really good for a common. Uh, that's going to be good for limited. Because it does so much more. It's not like it just gives it a plus one, plus one for the turn and hexproof and then that's it for two. That's not that great. But the fact that you get a counter and it gains reach and it gets trample and it gets hexproof and it gets instructable for two. Um, yeah, that's a, if you're playing green and limited, you'd pick that for sure. Because that's going to protect whatever you want to keep alive. Um, from board wipe, from spot removal, from blocking. Yeah, definitely pick those up. Those are good for limited. <clears throat> Thanos is tinkering. Three and a green instant, but two plus one plus one counters on target artifact, creature, or land you control. Untap that permanent. If it isn't a creature, it becomes a zero zero creature in addition to its other types. Okay. That's not bad. At instant speed is, is pretty decent, but I'm just not a fan of turning your lands into creatures with so much removal in the format. Third path icono iconoclast? Iconoclast. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> blue and a red. Human Monk. It's a 2-1. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 color soldier artifact creature token. All right. Um, I don't know if this would, like... Storm really isn't as much of a thing in Modern as it used to be, but I could see something like this going into Storm for Modern. Um, as for Standard, uh, this will find a place 100%. It's a 2-1 cheap creature. Uh, and there, I think there's a bird from Dominaria uh, or some sort of flying creature that... Um, want you to be casting instant sorcerers and I think the board gets haste and a plus one plus oh something like that I'd have to look it up but uh next we have goblin firebomb it's a one cost artifact that has flash you can tap seven to sack it and destroy target permanent uh this will be good for limited I don't know if it'll see standard play unless you just got a horde of power stones that you can just sink into this otherwise it's just seven to destroy target permanent <clears throat> Eight, essentially. Unless you cast it at the end of the turn and then tap the seven to destroy target permanent, but then you're tapped out for the turn. So, uh, most most likely just limited. Uh, Falaji Vanguard, two red and a white. Human Soldier. It's a two, three first strike. Whenever Falaji Vanguard or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gets a plus two, excuse me, plus two, plus oh until end of turn. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield. Okay, so this doesn't, <clears throat> this doesn't care if it's, um, if they're tokens or not. So that's a, and it's not just a one instant type of a ability. Yeah. So if you put out three creatures, something is getting three or three different creatures, or one creature, one creature is getting a plus two plus zero. Oh. That's pretty good. Wow. Um, next we have Suchi Cave Garden. Garden guard. <laughs> it's an eight drop eight eight construct creature with vigilance. Has ward four. And when it dies, you add 8 colorless. Uh, until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as mana steps and phases end. Um, that's really good. So if you can figure out how to get this out um, with the Reforge. Is it Reforge? Well, I'll just call it Reforge. Um, card from your graveyard. And then use some sort of like sack mechanic. Uh, like you, um, what's a new, Diabolic Intent? Um, you can sack it, get the eight colorless, and then use it for something else. If there's something else that's better than this at the moment for what you're doing, I guess. Um, that'll that'll probably see some sort of weird jank. <clears throat> Thran Power Suit. It's two drop artifact equipment. Close enough, yeah. Uh, equip creature gets a plus one plus one for each aura and equipment attached to it, and has ward two. That's pretty good. So that'll go in like Voltron builds. Um, yeah, I like that. That's really good. Takasha's Dig Site. Add, doesn't come in tapped. Add one colorless. Tap three to surveil. Pretty simple. 
Mishra's Onslaught, which is three and a red. Instant, choose one. Create two 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature tokens. Or creatures you, can, creatures you control get a plus two, plus oh until end of turn. That's really good. Um, it might be like a one of or two of finisher in, in mono red because getting a plus two, plus O oh is really powerful for all of your little dudes that are out there. If you got five to seven creatures out, and they all get a plus two. That's crazy. Um, but I can't remember. I want to say there's another card that does the same thing in standard right now, but it's cheaper. So this might not actually see play. Uh, Obstinate Bailoth. Two and two green. This is a reprint, and this is a limited bomb. 100%. Um, this is a full four creature. When it enters the battlefield, you gain four life. And even if it was just that, that's really good. As a four four creature for four and gaining you four life. But no. If a spell or ability an opponent control causes you to discard Obstinate Bailoth, put it onto the battlefield instead of putting it to your graveyard. So that just little bit extra. Yeah, if you're going green, you pick these up. 100%. <clears throat> um, the Audacity. Uh, one green enchantment aura. Enchant creature gets a plus two, plus O, and has trample. And when Audacity is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. This kind of reminds me of uh, Raincore. Uh, a little bit. Yeah! I'm, I'm honestly just kind of clicking it to see if I'm on the right track. <laughs> just make sure I still got it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it kind of reminds me of Rancor, uh, but you don't get it back. But you do get to draw a card when uh, the when Audacity is put into the graveyard. So that's kind of cool. Fortified Beachhead. Uh, this is a blue-white land, rare. As it enters the battlefield, you may reveal a soldier card from your hand. And Fortified beach field, or Beachhead uh, enters the battlefield tapped unless you revealed a soldier card this way or you control a soldier. Um, you can, this taps for a blue or a white, and you can tap five soldiers you control, get a plus one, plus one to under. I don't like this card. I don't think it's that great. There's a lot you have to do. First of all, there's a lot you have to do. You have to have a soldier in hand. Obviously, this goes into one archetype of a deck. Um, you have to have soldiers in your in your hand in order to have it come in untapped and i would just prefer to play uh deserted beach instead i think deserted beach is an amazing dual land um and then you obviously it you don't get pinged for damage but paint sinking five just to give your board a plus one plus one uh doesn't seem that great because you could just play the creature soldier that does it um now i just i don't think this is all that great you're just it's, just, it's a mana sink uh, you, you might not have the soldier in hand. You, you probably do, and sure, it comes in untapped, but are you going to use it that turn? And if you don't use it, you just gave your opponent some information. Um, I never really liked cards like that that gave your opponent the information. Um, <clears throat> so I, I don't, I'm not a fan of this card. Um, yeah. All right, what's next? Brotherhood's End, one and two red. Choose one. Brotherhood's End deals three damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Uh, destroy all artifacts with man value three or less. Wow, this is really good. The artwork is sick too. The might stone and the weak stone. That's cool. So this is like um, was it born of the gods? Not born of the gods. Um, there's there's a red board white for one and two red that deals three damage to each creature and if it dies they get exiled. But this adds on to each planeswalker. Which is really good, <clears throat> and you get you have the choice to destroy all artifacts with mana value three or less. That's really good. So it'll get rid of your bank busters, and it'll get rid of all the power stones that you've accumulated. So yeah, be aware of that card because that's going to see play for sure. And we got—is this our first mythic? I think it is. All right. Well, we got our first mythic. Uh, one with the multiverse, six and two blue. I can already tell I'm going to play this card. <laughs> the artwork is gorgeous. I can't wait to see this in foil. Uh, it's a mythic enchantment. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. That's cool. Uh, you may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. That's cool. Once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from your hand or the top of your library without paying its mana cost. That's cool. Uh, excuse my cats. They're just wilding out again. So... Yeah, I can't wait to play this card into some sort of like Super Friends jank or or anything else for that matter, honestly. Um, there's not much to say about it. It's an overpowered card. It's really good and only costs 8. And for what you get out of this, 8 isn't so bad because you have Omniscience that's at what, 10, 7 and 3 blue, I think? Or is it 8 and 2 blue? I think it's 8 and 2 blue. You have Omniscience for that and then Omniscience is just play your hand for free. 
So, and that sees play in EDH for sure. So this is definitely an EDH card. I get it. But in standard, I'm going to try and play the crap out of this card. <clears throat> All right. So we got Onion... B on oh, my Lanta. Obliterating Bolt. I have no idea where Onion came from. Don't judge me. Whatever. <laughs> One in a red sorcery. Uh, Bolt deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that creature or planeswalker would die this turn, exile instead. All right, pretty simple. Mechanized warfare one and two red. Uh, enchantment, which is a rare. If a red artifact, if a red or artifact source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent and opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus one. Uh, this is just like those doubling damage effects that we've ha that we've seen in the past. So, uh, but for three as an enchantment, I think might be the cheapest one. I think the f uh, something furnace. Um, where is it? Oh, it's not on here. But, yeah, there's another one, too, that was more expensive. It doubles all damage, so I guess this is just specific to red and artifact source you control. So uh, I'm sure that'll see play for sure. Uh, Thopter Architect, three and a white, two, three creature, human artificer. Whenever an artifact enters a battlefield under your control, target creature gets flying to end of turn. So this is a limited play bill. Uh, Simeon Simulacrum, three... Uh, three drop artifact, which is a rare, two one. When it enters the battlefield, put two plus one plus encounters on target creature you control. So you can put them on itself or something else. Uh, but it has unearth for two and two green, so that's not too bad. That'd be good in um in limited as well. Uh, Falaji Dragon Engine. Oop, there we go. Excuse me for eight mana. This is a five five creature dragon. Has flying. You can tap two colorless, and it gets dragon breathing. Um, otherwise, you can prototype it for two and red, and it becomes a one-three. So, not bad. Um, these are all reprints. I'm not going to get into those right now, but we will scroll through them so you can see them. Uh, some of these I'm actually kind of stoked for. These are pretty cool. I like them. There's a few of these I'm going to be picking up, like Cage Sun for sure, um, and Chromatic Lantern. <clears throat> all right, what's this? This artwork is sick. Uh, steel and oil dreams cost one black sorcery target opponent reveals their hand choose up to one artifact or creature card from it then choose an artifact or creature card from their graveyard exile those cards <clears throat> okay does what it does uh, next card we got is reconstructed thopter which is a three drop two one flying unearthed for two colorless pretty simple uh, siege veteran two and a white at the beginning of combat on your turn put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control isn't that just like Luminarch Ascension or Luminarch Ascendant? Uh, whenever another creature, or excuse me, whenever another non-token creature, soldier, you control dies, create a one one colorless soldier artifact creature token. That's a lot of key words on that. Luminarch Aspirant. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it has Luminarch Aspirant on it. And did they fix it or no? At the beginning of combat on your turn, <laughs> the only way they fixed it was they, they made it cost one more. So this is Luminarch Aspirant with better toughness and power, but costs one more. So you pay one more to have a 2-2 Luminarch Aspirant. Are you serious? At the beginning of combat. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beginning of combat on your turn. Put a plus one counter on target creature you control. Yeah. This is just a better Luminarch Aspirant. We'll see if it sees play. I don't see why it wouldn't. Like, why wouldn't it? It's not legendary, and it has keywords of human and soldiers. And this was a cleric. And it has this where it can create creatures. Yeah, this is just a better Luminarch Esperant. That's so dumb. <laughs> oh, that's a gorgeous Gilded Lotus. Ooh, Perilous Vault. That's sick. Um, Yeah, these cards look gorgeous. Maze Mind Tome. Platinum Angel. Sculpting Steel. Ooh, Soul Lantern or Soul Guide Lantern. That looks really good. Sigil of Valor. Ooh, Sundering Titan. That thing's a bomb. <clears throat> All right. Battlefield Butcher. Two and a black. Tap five. It's a it's a human soldier. One four creature. Tap five. Tap it. Each opponent loses fi uh, five life. <laughs> two life. His ability costs one less to activate for each creature card in your graveyard. So essentially, you could end up doing this for free and drain or not drain, but uh have your opponent lose two two life so that's not bad uh thoptic mechanic is one and a blue two one human artificer whenever you draw uh your second card for each turn put a plus one mechanic on a thoptic mechanic didn't we see this earlier 
uh, when it dies, create a 1-1 color stop to artifact creature token with flying. So this, I thought this was going to be like Hanger Backwalker, but obviously not. Because I figured with it would, when it dies, you get a Thopter for each counter on it, but I guess that would have been too OP. Uh, machine over matter, one and a blue instant. This spell costs one less to cast if you control an artifact. So for one blue, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. That's really good. It's just a very much better uh, unsummon, because unsummon can't hit non-land permanents. So then what's it like? Uh, blank, Alchemist Retrieval into thin air okay yeah that's a really good card uh that'll see play for sure so that was two days ago spoilers <laughs> that's what i'm talking about uh that's for edh all right alloy animist one green one one creature uh two and a green to end of turn target non-creature uh, non -creature artifact you control becomes a four four artifact creature mm. until end of turn target non-creature artifact you control oh so you can turn your vehicles or you can turn your power stones into 4-4 artifact creatures. That's pretty good. All right. Uh, right here. Let's see what homeboy here is. Steel Seraph. Six drop artifact. It's a 5-4 creature. It's a artifact angel. That's pretty cool. Um, has prototype. One and two white. And come in as a 3-3. Three, three. It has flying. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose flying, vigilance, or lifelink. Target creature control gains that ability to enter. Wow, that's really good. This is a great card. Uh, this is a really good card. This is one of the best ones I've seen um of this whole prototype set with these artifacts obviously except for the the worm gorger or whatever <clears throat> uh but this is really good even for one and two white you get a three three not like a one one or a two two but a three three is pretty decent for a three drop so for three you get a you get a three three creature that has flying and you can choose to give any of your other creatures you control flying vigilance lifelink uh until end of turn i like that that's really good uh, oh boy, this is a mythic. Mythic scare me these days. Platoon Dispensary. It's a 5 drop, 4 6 artifact construct creature. Um, at the beginning of your end step, if you control 2 or more other creatures, draw a card. If you could tap 3 and a white to create a 1 1 colorless artifact creature token, and you can unearth this for 2 and 2 white. At the beginning of your end step, if you control 2 or more other creatures, so it can create the creatures that it needs in order for you to draw a card. This is really good. This is really, really good. Um, and this will see standard play. Obviously, it's going to see EDH play 100%. But this will... Because you can cast this off Power Stone Shards, which is just... Bleh. It's going to be good. Unit of the Third Path. Two and a white instant. Draw a card, then you gain life equal to the number of cards in your hand. Ooh, I love this. I love this. Because I love Revitalize. I love Revitalize, which isn't on here. But you gain four life, draw a card. I think Revitalize was like draw a card, gain three life for two, one and a white. So for one more, I'm down to draw a card and gain maybe three to six life, three to seven life or whatever, you know. Um, yeah, I'll I'll definitely include some of these, possibly in sideboards, honestly, because with Shieldred out, you're getting drained all the time. Uh, Tenacious D is a 3-2 that just comes out on turn 2, 3, and 4 sometimes. And you're just taking it to the face. So being able to uh, um, gain that type of life is extremely beneficial. There's not too much ways to gain life in the format right now. Unless you are playing Obscure Interceptor that has lifelink. Um, or a couple of other things that have some life gain. Or if you're playing Shieldred yourself. So I think that's really good, that Union of the Third Path. Uh, it, I don't think it'll see a lot of play. I'm going to play it for sure, though. <laughs> uh, we got Zephyr Sentinel. One and a blue flash. It's a 2 1 creature, has flash, flying. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, turn up to one other target creature you control to its owner's hand. If it was a soldier, put a plus one plus one counter on Zephyr Sentinel. So the, the plus one plus one counter isn't as important as the fact that you can bounce a creature who is either going to die to a board wipe or who is going to be targeted to for removal. You could bounce it and save your own creature that way. So if you're playing Esper and your shoulder is about to get uh, Infernal Grasp, you can Zephyr Sentinel and bounce shoulder back to your hand. They waste the Infernal Grasp, and now you have a 2-1 flying creature on the battlefield in response. So um, I think this will be great for sideboards in standard. I think it'll be really good because it only costs one and a blue. That's what makes it really good. If this was like two and a blue, it wouldn't it wouldn't do much. And it's kind of crazy how one mana can make that big of a difference on certain cards. Um, but this card is really, really good. I like this. Um, <clears throat> and, and keep in mind, it's just target creature you control. So it's, you can't do it to theirs. 
excuse me, need some water. I haven't made my coffee this morning yet. <clears throat> All right, Gixian Puppeteer. Three and a black. It's a rare Phyrexian Warlock. It's a 4-3 creature. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, each opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. Oh. Uh, when Gixian Puppeteer dies, return another target creature card with mana value three or less from a graveyard to the battlefield. Black is so strong. It is ridiculous how strong black is. And it's just getting stronger and stronger on these last few sets. Uh, this card's good. This card is really good. I mean... Oh, man, this is so good. This just fits right into the mono black. You now have a second option for your turn four. Excuse me, where you can play either the Sheldred or the Puppeteer <clears throat> or even an Esper. Because I, I play three Sheldreds. I'll probably play like two Puppeteers in that deck because this is really good. Um, yeah, because you get to drain. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, that's too good. Uh, let's see. Great Dessert Surveyor. Dessert. <laughs> I thought it was going to say Deserter. So I said Dessert. Great Desert Surveyor. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, it costs four and a white. It's a human artificer. Uh, when Great Desert Surveyor enters the battlefield, create a tap power stone token for each creature you control. Ooh, that's good. Uh, this would be a limited bomb. I would look out for this card in limited. Uh, so if you have like three or four creatures out, and then you play this on turn five on curve, and and you have a one two three four on the battle on the battlefield, um, for each so it counts itself. So you're gonna create five power stones. So the next turn, that big bomb artifact you have that's like an eight or nine drop costs five less at that point. So I think that's gonna be a card to look out for as well in limited. Um, I should probably write these limited cards down <laughs> for myself because I have such a bad memory. Um, Fauna Shaman is back! One and a green. I haven't seen Fauna Shaman in years. Uh, it's a rare elf shaman, 2-2. Two, two. A lot of a lot of new players won't remember Fauna Shaman, but Fauna Shaman did work back in the day. Uh, you tap a green and tap it to discard a creature card. Search the library for a creature card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. So it just tutors out creatures for you as long as you discard a creature. So here's the original art. This art is gorgeous. I love this art. But here is the original. Ah, they're not showing it. Alright, well, whatever. But anyway, yeah, Fauna Shaman. Uh, that's a welcomed uh, uh, reprint for sure. Junkyard Genius. One black and a red 2-2 two, two human artificer. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a power stone, and it has unearths. Oh, no, sorry, I just need to read. <laughs> you could tap one a black and a red, sacrifice another creature or artifact. Until end of turn, other creatures you control get a plus one, plus O, oh, and gain mint. And haste? What? Tap three, sack another creature or artifact, so when it enters the battlefield, it creates the artifact it needs for you to activate this ability until end of turn. Other creatures you control, other creatures you control, get a plus one plus O, oh, menace, and haste. That is ridiculous. Like even if it did, if even if they didn't get haste, the menace part, the menace is what puts this over the top. That is crazy. Wow, that's a Obviously, that's a limited bomb, but that's going to probably see some play in standard, honestly, in Rakdos. There's no reason why it shouldn't. Uh, Deathbloom Ritualist. Three black and a green. It's a 3-5 elf warlock, and I love this art. That's sick. Um, tap to add X mana of any one color where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. That's not bad. You pick whatever color you want if you have, you know, obviously however many you have in your graveyard. Cool. Uh, Irwunder. Oh, all right. That's a different language. Sorry. <laughs> oh man sometimes i'm just straight up big dumb i'm not gonna lie <laughs> all right awaken the woods uh it costs x and green greens a sorcerer create x uh one one green forest dryad land creature oh you just create uh dryad arbors yeah <laughs> you just create dryad arbors um it's exactly what that is. I mean, you're creating mana for this, which is pretty cool. Honestly, you're ramping in a sense, uh, but they're very, very, very uh, much uh, risk of dying because they are creatures. So that's kind of cool. Uh, what do we got next? Draconic Destiny. One and two reds. A mythic enchantment. 
Uh, enchanted creature gets a plus one, plus one, and it has flying, haste, and this creature gets a plus one until end of turn, so it gets dragon breathing. It's a dragon addition to its other types. Wow. Uh, when enchanted creature dies, return draconic destiny to its owner's hand. That's going to be tough to remove, because they just put on another creature. That's pretty good. Uh, next, we have a different language card. Before I read that out loud again, a persistent behemoth. It's a five drop artifact. It's two, four, two, seven. Um, it's a bestie. It's a best friend. Cause I'm your best friend. It's a bestie. Anyway, uh, it's a beast creature. You may play land cards from your graveyard. Oh, it's got Crucible of Worlds on it. Uh, Unearth for green, green. <clears throat> yeah, look at that Crucible of Worlds. Um. I don't know, like, you might be able to get, like, one land trigger off of this um, before it probably dies. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's that great of a card. All right, what do we got here? <clears throat> Gruesome Realization, one and two black. Choose one. You draw two cards and you lose two life, so you sign in blood. Uh... Or creatures your opponent's control get a minus one minus one to end of turn. So that right there is going to kill all of your dryad arbors. So just keep that in mind when you play this card. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's really good. Ambush paratrooper, and it's an uncommon. I'm so glad they made this uncommon. Um, ambush paratrooper, one and a white. It's a one two human soldier. Um, sorry, I'm looking at the artwork. Artwork's pretty badass. All right, it's got flash and flying. Um, Creatures you control get a plus one, plus one till end of turn. Tap five for that. Uh, it just reminds me of that beach land or whatever, uh, except it's not for soldiers, it's for all creatures. So I think this card is better than that land um, because this is creatures you control and not just a subtype uh, or super type of, of soldiers. It's not just the soldier aspect that is getting the buff. It's all of your creatures that are getting the buff for the same amount of mana. Um, and this has flash, so... I mean, if you got seven mana up, you can flash this in during block phase and then pump your entire board. That's really good. Uh, let's see. Next, we got Blade Whip Transmogrant. Transmogrant. Uh, it's a two-drop rare three-one zombie artifact creature. Uh, it can't block, and you can tap four and two black to return Blade Whip Transmogrant from the graveyard to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. This ability costs four less to activate if an opponent controls four or more non-basic lands. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, costs four less to activate if opponent controls more non-basic lands. I guess it's all right. Obviously, it's going to see play and it's going to have graveyard recursion, but we're getting a lot of graveyard hate. So I'm happy about that. Uh, so I'm not too worried about it. Take flight three and a blue. Uh, it's enchantment. Uh, creature gets a plus one plus oh and has flying whenever this creature attacks a draw card. I love how this says attacks and not when it deals damage. Uh, it does cost quite a bit though to do. Uh, we got Evangel of Synthesis. Uh, blue and a black. This artwork is sick. Um, it's a Phyrexian human cleric two three. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Okay. As long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn, Synthesis gets a plus one and has Menace. That's not bad. Uh, Wasteful Harvest. Two and a green. Instant. Mill five cards. You may put a permanent card from among them, the milled cards this way into your hand. That's pretty good. At instant speed, that's really good. Gnawing Vermin. Costs one black. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target player mills two cards. Uh, when it dies, target creature you don't control gets a minus one, minus one to end of turn. And it's a 1-1. One, one. So you have a possibility of killing a 2-2 two, two if you block with this, which is kind of cool. Uh, Hero of the Dunes. Three white and a black. It's a 3-2 human soldier. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature... Oh, return target artifact or creature card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Creatures you control with mana value 3 or less get a plus 1, plus 0. Oh. They are really uh, emphasizing mana value of 3 or less in this set. There's a lot that is 3 or less. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, that's not bad. Alright, so, we got our Givian Avenger, which is a 6-drop shapeshifter. That means something. Um, it's a 5-5. Five, five. 
You can tap one until end of turn. Avenger gets a minus one, minus one, and it gains your choice of flying, vigilance, death touch, or haste. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, goblin Blast Runner. It's a one-drop goblin. Uh, it's a one-two. And he gets a plus two, plus O, oh, and has menace as long as you sacrifice the permanent this turn. Jeez. Oh, that is really good. Uh, power Plant Worker. Ooh, is this a nod to Tron Lands? I know we're not getting Tron Lands. I'm so glad we're not. Um, it costs five. It's a 4-4 four, four Assembly Worker creature. You can tap three. Power Plant Worker gets a plus two, plus two until end of turn. If you control creatures named Mine Worker and Tower... Yeah, it's a whole hint to Tron. <laughs> uh, put two plus one, plus one counters on Power Plant Worker instead. Activate only once each turn. Um, that's pretty cool. It's expensive. Uh, let's see. Oops. Transmogrant Altar. It's a three-drop artifact... Uh, tap a black and tap it to sacrifice a creature. Add three. Oh, is that uh Ashnod's altar? Uh, tap two colors and tap it to sacrifice a creature and create a three. Excuse me, three three uh zombie artifact creature token. Activate only as a sorcery. Yeah, Ashnod's altar. Sac creature. Add that. You're paying an extra mana for it, but you're getting an extra colorless out of it. Wow. Wow, that's really good. It's an uncommon. That'll see play. Uh, levitating Statue. Yeah, Levitating Statue. Uh, it's a two-drop artifact flying. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on living Levitating Statue. Tap two colorless. Levitating Statue becomes a 1-1 one, one construct artifact creature to end of turn. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell. I love how this can go in any deck. And it just gets better and better as the game goes on. And if they don't remove it, it's just going to be a beast that has flying. <laughs> uh, I like this card a lot. If you're playing limited, pick these up. It, maybe like one or two of them if you could find them. Because you're going to be having like 16 creatures in your deck. And the rest would be lands and then a few uh, non-creature spells. But in regular standard, I could see this being like maybe a one or two of as a possible finish. Oh, my head keeps headset keeps going out. Uh, mass production five and a white. Create four one one colorless soldier creature tokens. Um, I think there's just we have something. I don't know. Like this costs six, and I think we just got something in Dominaria um, that is better than that. And I have to look at it right now because it's gonna bug me if I don't see it, or if I don't look for it right now. Um, there it is right here. Captain's Call for four. You create three, but you get one more for two more mana. Obviously, subtypes or types matter. Soldier, artifact, colorless. Like, I get it, but that's that's expensive. Captain's Call, so I'll play. Um, I mean, if that's all you got in limited, then that's what you play in limited. So, I guess it is what it is. Uh, what is this? Arms race. Three and a red enchantment. Uh, tap three and a red. You may put an artifact card from your hand onto the battlefield. The artifact gains haste. Sack it at the beginning of the next... Whoa! 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 And this isn't a tap ability either. Like, if you have eight mana, you can put two big boys on the, on the battlefield. Like, oh my god. This is an uncommon. Oh. This is, that is crazy. That is really good. That's how you get those big things out instead of pain manas. Uh, fatal Cooperation, three and a black sorcerer. Target opponent gains control of target artifact you control. Draw cards equal to its mana value. Hmm. I mean, if it has summoning sickness, then it, they're not going to be able to do anything with it. Uh, well, they, if I remember right, they um, they can't do anything with it. Oh, wait. Oh, they keep it. They get to keep it. I thought it was just until the end of turn or something. Ooh. Is there some sort of artifact that's going to be detrimental to the, to a person? I have to... I don't know. 
I don't know. Uh, there's something that I'm missing with that that I'm not seeing. And maybe it's in another format. We'll have to see. Uh, Autonomous Assembler. 5 drop, 4 5 assembly worker. Uh, has prototype for 1 and a white, and it can be a 2 2. <clears throat> has a vigilance. Tap a colorless and tap it. Put a plus plus encounter on a uh, target assembly worker you control. Okay, so assembly workers are a thing. Uh, next we have Iron Craw Crusher. Craw or Claw? Uh, it's a 7 drop worm. Has prototype for 2 and 2 green, and it'll be a 2 5. Uh, when it enters the. When. Excuse me. When Iron Claw Crusher attacks, target attacking creature gets a plus X plus O until end of turn where X is uh, its power. That's not bad. Good limited card. That's a good limited pro prototype. And then we have. This looks like a Graboid from uh, Tremors Part 2. <laughs> uh, Giant Slag Maw, 2 and a red. It's a Dinosaur Beast, has trample, players can't gain life. Okay. We've had that effect in standard before. Can't gain life. <clears throat> Exaggeration over the top. <laughs> All right. Uh, five red and a red sorcery. Each player reveals cards from the top of their library equal to the number of non-land permits they control. Then put all permits revealed this way onto the battlefield. Put the rest in each other's graveyards. Each player reveals cards from the top of their library equal to the number of non-land permits they control. Then put all permits revealed this way onto the That's That could be fun. That could be fun. Uh, static net three and a white. Ooh, is that like the artwork from Leyline Binding? Oh uh, no, it looks cool though. That's what it reminds me of. Uh, static net three and a white enchantment. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, exit target non-land permanent and opponent controls until static net leaves the battlefield. When static net enters the battlefield, you make you gain two life and create a tap power stone. That's pretty good. I like that. Obviously, you're gonna play Leyline, Leyline Binding over this, but. If you're not playing the five colors for the domain, then you got this, which isn't a bad card by any means. <clears throat> uh, Sky Striker, or excuse me, Sky Strike Officer, two in a blue. It's a two three human soldier, and he has flying. Um, whenever officer attacks, create a one one color soldier artifact creature token. Tap three on tap soldiers you control, draw a card. That's pretty good. It has value. Whenever he attacks, you create a dude. That's pretty good. It's a good card. It's a really good card. Uh, What's that? Myrel? Mural? Myrel Shield of Argive. Uh, three and a white legendary creature human soldier, which is mythic. Uh, you know what? I'm happy that we haven't seen too many legendary creatures in the, in spoilers today. So, I welcome this legendary. That's that's dope. It's cool. But the other day when we were spoilers, it was like legendary after legendary after legendary after legendary. Anyway, uh, during your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures. Oh, there's a Grand Abolisher. Uh, whenever Myrel Shield of Argive attacks create x one of those soldier tokens uh where x is the number of soldiers you control okay yeah so they're really pushing the uh, the soldier which i think could be really good now that actually sounds fun i wouldn't mind making a soldier deck um but yeah that's grand abolisher Boop, grand abolisher is it the same wording exactly can't cast those activate abilities of artifacts creatures or enchant yep it's the, it's it's a, it's a grand abolisher that's sick. I love that. I can't wait to put that in Esper. <clears throat> uh, it'll probably be like a two of in the sideboard for me for Esper, just so that when I'm playing up against um, uh, it might go on the main board because everything has its speed at this point. <laughs> I was just thinking about it. Like Infernal Grasp is instant. Um, Anything that's at sorcerer speed is is okay, I guess. So yeah, but just go in those in the main. <laughs> uh, what do we got next? Blade Quill Serpent X and six. Uh, it's a five four mythic serpent. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, for each blue spent to cast it, draw a card. For each black spent to cast it, each opponent discards a card. And for each red, it gets a plus one plus O oh, gains trample haste until end of turn. That's a good card. That's a really good card. Grixis, for sure. Uh, Cityscape Leveler, 8. It's an 8-8 construct, trample, mythic. Uh, when you cast a spell, and whenever Cityscape Leveler attacks, destroy up to one target non-land permanent. This controller creates a tap pair. What? When you cast it, and whenever it attacks. <sighs> oh, that is disgusting. 
Ooh, that is good. Uh, Skyfisher Spider, two black and a green. It's a Reach Spider that's a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target non-land permanent. What is up with all these destroyed non-land permanents? Jeez. Uh, when it dies, you may gain one life for each creature card in your graveyard. If you do, exile the spider from your graveyard. So it's a choice if you want to keep it back there or not or bring it back with any type of graveyard recursion. So the option for that is really cool. I like that. Um, <clears throat> Power Stone Engineer, one and a white. It's a human artificer. It's a 2-1 creature. When it dies, create a tap Power Stone. Okay, that's a good blocker for limited. Uh, maybe even standard, honestly, like just to put a two drop two one out there and just let it get heroic, let it heroic block. And then you create a power stone. That's not bad. Uh, let's see. Misery shadow. So they're talking about me. Got it. <laughs> uh, one and, uh, one color and a black. It's a two, two creature. It's a shade. Uh, if a creature and opponent controls would die, exile it instead. Okay, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, tap one, Mr. Shadow gets a plus one, plus one to end of turn. Ah, tap one, colorless. That's good. Yeah, you can just pump this up all day. It's kind of weird how it doesn't have flying. I don't know. Unless shades are just, like it says, shadows, just shadows. I guess that would kind of make sense. But if it's some sort of entity that can move and everything, it can move from shadow to shadow, I would assume. So, I don't know. Uh, Argothian Sprite. It's one and a green. It's a fairy, 2-2. Two, two. Uh, Argothian Sprite can't be blocked uh, by artifact creatures. Tap 7, put 2 plus 1 counters on Argothian Sprite. It's not bad for limited. Uh, we got Keeper of the Cadence. 4 and a blue. Human Wizard is a 2-5 creature. Tap 3, put target artifact, instant, or sorcery card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. That's pretty cool. Uh, Gurgling Anointer. Two and a black. It's a Phyrexian Horror that's a 1-3 creature that has flying. <clears throat> Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a plus and plus encounter on Gurgling Anointer. Uh, when it dies, return another target creature card with mana value less than or equal to the... Less than or equal to Anointer's power from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's not bad. Um, hey! We're all caught up. Look at that. Let's hit a refresh real quick. And we got one. Mind Worker. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, it's a two-drop artifact assembly worker, 2-1. You gain one life. If you control creatures named Power Plant Worker and Tower Worker, you gain three life instead. So that's a pretty cool combo. You can well, – combo, but uh, synergy you got that you could do with uh, Limited. I don't know if it will see um, standard play. It, it, it could. It just depends on everything else that comes out. So um, right now we are at 195 cards uh, spoiled out of 287. So we have less than 100 cards left. Um, so yeah, that will conclude this, uh, spoiler video and I know it's an, Ooh, it's over an hour. Uh, we'll see if I cut anything, but <clears throat> this one's a bit longer, but we're all completely caught up now. So sick. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. So we will see what happens in the next spoiler day coming up. Um, and I've been calling this set the Step Brothers War. So let me know if you like the little Step Brother clips I've been doing with magic cards and everything. I think it's hilarious, but I don't know if people are liking it. But I'm gonna keep doing it for this set. Um, it's I think it's pretty funny. But uh, yeah, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it, and I will catch y'all later. Peace.